Please be seated. Um, if you can, please begin by turning in your Bibles to Luke 24. If you don't have a Bible, there'll be some men making their way down the aisles. If you will go ahead and put your hand in the air, they will make sure to give you a Bible for you to follow along in our service today. And if you don't own one, this one is yours to keep. In Luke 24, we dive into a context where Jesus has just been hung on a cross between two criminals, and one of the criminals joined the crowd in mocking Jesus, while the other recognizes that he was a sinner that deserved to suffer, while Jesus suffered despite doing no wrong. Darkness fell, and Jesus breathed his last, and his body was placed in a tomb. After the Sabbath, a few women returned to tend to his body, and then follow me as I read, beginning in Luke 24, verse 2. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And while they were perplexed about this, behold, two men suddenly stood near them in dazzling clothing. And as the women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living one among the dead? He is not here, but he has risen. Remember how he spoke to you while he was still in Galilee, saying that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again? And they remembered his words and returned from the tomb and reported all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. In Luke chapters 9 and 18, Jesus told his followers that he would be crucified and he would rise again. And now angels appear and remind the women about Jesus' words. The women remember and they rush to tell the apostles. And verse 10 continues, The other women with them were telling these things to the apostles, but these words appeared to them as nonsense, and they would not believe them. The women's report is exactly as Jesus said, Yet most of the apostles dismissed their words as nonsense. In verse 13, the risen Jesus obscures his identity and joins two men on a road. The men, unaware they're talking with Jesus, tell him about the women who claimed the angels appeared and said that Jesus was alive, but the men hadn't yet believed. Jesus answers these men in verse 25. O oh, foolish men and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and to enter into his glory? And then, beginning with Moses and with all of the prophets, he explained to them the things concerning himself in all the scriptures. Not only had Jesus spoken personally of his death and resurrection, but so had the Old Testament. But their foolishness and unbelief towards this had brought Jesus rebuke. Jesus then graciously explained the meaning of the scriptures that these disciples missed and allowed them to see his true identity before he vanished before their sight. And these men rushed, like the women, to tell the eleven apostles. Later, when speaking to the apostles, Jesus now appeared right in the middle of them. The apostles had now heard from the women. They had heard from Peter. They had heard from the men from the road, as well as likely others. But not until Jesus appeared in front of them do they finally believe. Look to Jesus' words in verse 44. Now he said to them, These are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you that all things which are written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise again from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name to all the nations. Jesus didn't unlock some hidden meaning that they couldn't see before. If he had, then his earlier rebuke would have been groundless. Instead, he points them to the clear meaning of the Old Testament and the clear meaning of his own words that they missed in their unbelief. He didn't 
rebuked them for not having the right hermeneutic when it came to interpreting his word, but for not believing it when they heard. The idea of a suffering Messiah didn't fit with what they wanted or what they expected. When we take communion this morning, we remember Jesus, God in flesh, who lived a perfectly sinless life and died as a righteous substitute for all the sins of all who would believe. And then he rose victorious from the grave. Do you know this Jesus? Have you heeded his words and repented of your sin, seeking forgiveness in his sight? Today, there are only two responses to Jesus, and they both have eternal consequences. You are either the one who hears what God has revealed in his word, believes it, repents, and submits to it, or you are like the unbelieving disciples who disregarded God's words. We who have followed Jesus were once deceived. We were rebellious enemies of God who would not and could not submit to his words. But what did it take for us to place our faith in Jesus Christ? The same thing that it took for Jesus' disciples to be delivered from their unbelief. The disciples had heard God's word in the mouth of Jesus and on the pages of the Old Testament, but they hadn't truly paid attention to them, understood them, or remembered them. They haven't rec- hadn't received them by faith when these things didn't seem to be pleasant, when they didn't seem to fit with what they thought, they knew, they wanted, or what they expected. But by grace, Jesus opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He performed a supernatural work to overrule the sinful, unbelieving, man-centered thoughts of, and opinions of the disciples. And he enabled them to understand and believe his words by faith. Believer, God has opened our eyes and given us the gift of faith so that we could and would receive and believe his words. If there is sin in your life this morning that you haven't confessed and turned from, Repent. Turn from your sin this morning and join us in worshiping this Jesus who opened our eyes to respond in faith to his gospel. As we remember his body that was broken and his blood that was shed that is symbolized in the cup and the bread that we passed out to you shortly. But if you are not a follower of Jesus Christ today, we'd ask that when the plate comes in front of you that you allow it to pass without taking it. This is a time of remembrance for believers as we remember the death and resurrection of Jesus on the cross. But we are glad that you're here today. And we plead with you to turn to Jesus today. God has spoken. He has spoken in his word. He has spoken in the Bible. He has spoken to us in his son, Jesus Christ. And he commands that all of us who hear would listen to his words, believe his words, and repent so that our sins would be forgiven in Jesus Christ. We would love for you to speak with anyone that you've seen up here this morning in front, or you can speak to one of our pastors after the service at the information table. They would love to talk with you about what God has revealed about salvation in his word and what it means for you to receive it by faith. Uh, The men in the back, please come forward and come and serve us. Believers, when you have prepared your own hearts, considering this the finished work of Jesus on the cross, please take communion on your, on your own this morning.